I want to put together two ideas into one. What we said at one point was that if you have current going out one side of the page in a coil and in one side of the page on a coil, then between the two co uh, sides of a coil, we drew it this way, between the two sides of a coil, we'd have a magnetic field that would be oriented in one direction within this coil. We call it a solenoid, and we say that we're producing an electromagnet, and we're creating a fairly intense electromagnetic field within this thing. And we could also say, hey, 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 let's put a bar of metal inside of that electromagnet, and if we leave it there long enough, if it's like soft iron, what's going to happen to the bar? Turn into a, a so-called permanent magnet. It'll get magnetized. Okay? We can make ourselves little permanent magnets. Now, if that permanent magnet is taken out and played with, will it be a magnet? Yeah, yeah for a while, until somebody hammers it and misaligns the, the, uh, the, the poles. That's cool. But what about if we take it out and put it in? Take it out and put it in. Take it out and put it in. Shake it all about. What happens then? It won't like something won't be happy. Let's talk about what happens when that happens. Are you talking about like you can put it in a Not much. direction or something? Or well, let's see. Let's see what happens. Um, so here's my coil. Here's my coil. And what we said was we've got a, a current carrying wire that has current going in one side or away from us on one side of the coil and towards us on the other side of the coil so that this coil could cause a magnetic field. Now I want to forget about that wire for a second because we use that wire to produce a permanent magnet and the permanent magnet that we produced as it came out had a north end and it had a south end. Now another idea that we talked about, uh, Matthew, can you hold it just one second? Okay. Oh, quick question. Okay. Yeah, we're writing this down. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I should have said a title. Inducing current. How long will it be? Not long. No, you'll need a new page. Inducing current in a solenoid. Okay, so we've now got a permanent magnet. Now I want to take this permanent magnet and I want to go find myself another solenoid. Okay, another loop. Another coil, another, another solenoid. And I want to take this solenoid and I want to take my magnet now and shove a magnet into my solenoid. And so you can imagine what that's going like, to look like. South, north. If I take this magnet and I try to force it into my solenoid, we talked before about inducing a current by pushing a wire through a changing magnetic field. Now this time we're going to push a magnet with its changing magnetic field as it approaches. The magnetic field is going to change. Or the intensity is going to change as it gets closer to this wire. As I push this magnet into the coil, what's going to happen to the magnetic field that's going to be induced around the coil? Is it going to welcome the magnet, or is it going to react to oppose the magnet's motion? Does it have a current already? There's no current in it as yet. Well, then last time it'll happen yet because there's nothing to control. Well, last time we said we had a wire that didn't have any current in it, and it opposed the motion that it was being forced to do. This time we've got a coil that has no current in it, mm -hmm. and I would like to propose that it's going to oppose the motion that the magnet is trying to achieve. Okay? Well, let's see. If, the, if we're trying to force in a south end, what would the induced polarity to this coil be to oppose that motion? Oh. South. Now, according to a right-hand rule that we have previously for solenoids, what does that tell you about the, the end of the north end? Wouldn't that be the bottom? Yeah. Now we got to look at this solenoid the way I've drawn it. If I reach my hand with a right hand and I say that north is the direction of my thumb, that means it's going to be reaching into the page on the left hand side of this drawing. 
And as the fingers curl around, it's going to be coming out of the page on the right-hand side of this drawing. And so if I follow the current around, I'll, I'll do it in, uh, in green, as I follow the current around these coils, I could map out the path of the current flow. So by forcing a magnet, permanent magnet that is, into a solenoid, I can produce current flowing in one direction. What about this? What if I do the exact same experiment, only this time, I really hate drawing these coils. Sorry, I didn't invent coils. I didn't <laughs> you know what, we're going to do it in demo day, I'm going to have a bunch of these and we can pull magnets in and out of coils. Hey. What, what if this time I take my magnet with its south end and its north end and I try to yank my magnet out of the coils? What end would the, the, uh, the top of this coil have to be to oppose a magnet getting yanked out of it if the south end is at the bottom of the, the bar magnet being yanked? Well, we got the south. South is the last thing leaving the door. The north. Yeah, it'd be north. So I have to say, okay, so the, the north end of the electromagnet is the top of it, the south end is the bottom, and again, I can use my right hand rule, I can say, all right, so that means that if the north is the top of that electromagnet, of that solenoid, it's not an electromagnet right now, it's just a piece of wire, that means that the current is going to be going into the page on the right and out of the page on the left, and you end up getting current going into the page on the right, out of the page on the left as I reach my hand around this thing and if I map out the current that means that the current is going to be going this way now as the magnet gets yanked out. Oops, I went the wrong way. So if I have this coil and I force a magnet into it the current will get pushed one way because of the oppos oppositional magnetic field that gets induced. And if I pull the magnet out of this coil, the current gets forced to go the other way. Because, again, because of the oppositional magnetic field that gets produced. And really, this is a, a nice, simple way, almost like a piston type approach to producing alternating current. Okay? It's not the way that we typically do it at the power plants.